Mr. Peterson, just one month ago, your world came crumbling down when your wife, Mrs. Peterson, revealed she had been keeping a secret that your 22-year-old daughter, LaJoya Jackson, may not be your biological daughter. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Mrs. Peterson, you admit that 22 years ago, during the window of conception, you had sex with another man, Mr. Beckham, but you want to prove today in court that Mr. Peterson is Ms. Jackson's father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Peterson, explain to the court what happened just a month ago. Uh, I work third shift, so I'm not at home a lot, but I came home, went to sleep, got up the next morning, not expecting anything out of the ordinary. My daughter, LaJoy, and her mother, my wife, Latia, they were outside talking, and I got up to go outside to say good morning, and before I could say anything, I heard LaJoya say, what, Milton might not be my dad? I looked at my wife and I said, what is she talking about? And she ignored me, I asked her again, she kind of teared up and she walked off. I didn't want to start an argument or a confrontation, so I just went on back in the house and waited for her to calm down, but she finally told me about two days later that there was somebody in the past. And Ms. Peterson, do you remember this conversation? Yes, Your Honor. And those were the words you uttered to your daughter that Mr. Peterson may not be her biological father? Yes, they are, Your Honor. So up until this point, Mr. Peterson, you had no doubt that LaJoya was your daughter? None at all, whatsoever. We have so much in common. I never, ever would have thought that this would be going on. Never. And you and Mrs. Peterson, you've been together for how long? 20... 23 years? Yes. And married for 13 of those years? Yes. So this is a long-standing relationship. Yes. And you never knew? No. You've kept this secret this long, Ms. Peterson? Yes, Your Honor. Why? I didn't want to harm my family or break what I built. When we first got together, I thought she was a virgin. I asked her about past relationships. She told me that they were not sexually active, but she did have other boyfriends before me. So that's why I'm where I'm at now. And that's why you had no question. Right. But in fact, you were not a virgin when you met him, Ms. Peterson? No, I wasn't, Your Honor. So, LaJoya, when you first heard this news, what were you thinking? I've had some suspicion for almost a year now. We were out of state, we just moved here, and a guy just randomly came up to my door and was like, oh, your mom told me where you live at, I'm your father, um, I went to jail, and your mom said I, another guy was your father because she didn't want nobody not to be there for you. When I first came to my mom about it, she was like, Oh, that's an old friend of mine, but he's, like, not right in the head. He, he's funny. I don't know why he says that or whatever. She kind of brushed it off, but I said it in front of my, my father, Mr. Peterson. I said it in front of him, but she was, like, like kind of trying to quiet it off, like, don't talk about it right now, you know? How did it happen that just a month ago you revisited this situation with your mother? A month ago, I was previously in court because I had a similar situation. Um, with my child's father, um, with my boyfriend, I lied and told him that he was not the father, but it, I didn't like having that between us, and I came clean to him. So then I confronted my mother, which is the conversation that my father, Mr. Peterson, walked in on, um, and asked her, do you want to just go and do it so that, you know, just for my clarity, because I'm feeling some type of way about it, you know? And she had never admitted that there was a possibility of one guy being my, my father, my potentially being my father. And then I found out there were multiple guys that could possibly be my father. Mm. Wow. wow. So, Mrs. Peterson, this now, I'm sure, has affected your marriage. Yes, it has. Because you told LaJoya there were multiple men that could be her father. Your Honor, we barely have a family anymore. And when it started from us daily arguing to them not speaking at all, to my mother sleeping in the car in the, in the driveway. She ended up getting so sick from sleeping out in the rain and it just got so bad. It's like, 
We don't even talk anymore. You don't talk to your father or your mother? None of us. It's like we don't exist to each other. It's not as much as I'm mad at him, it's as much that I'm hurt to look at him every day. He doesn't eat, he goes days without sleeping, and like that hurts me, you know? I know that it's not my fault, but I still feel so involved just for the simple fact that I don't wanna see him like that. Wow, you're right, sweetheart, it is not your fault. But I can imagine how it feels to see the man you love as your father going through this. Mr. Peterson, this hurts. A lot. I can see. A lot. I you... try very hard to, to stay around and be there, especially for the grandkids, because my, my grandparents were there for me, and I wanted to be that same type of example to them. And they call me grandpa, and every time I see them, they, I love you, and run up to me and give me a hug, and that touches me. And I lost my grandfather not too long ago. So I, while I'm still young, I want to be there for them. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Mrs. Peterson, would you have ever said anything if this man had not approached her a year ago? Had you planned to take this secret to your grave? Yeah, she did. Yes, she did, Joanna. It just feels so weird knowing that it's a potential that somebody else could be my father because I never thought that this could happen to me. Never thought. I never used to think as a child, like, oh, this might not be my dad. I just wake up and be like, oh, dad, make me some cereal. Not, oh, this might not be my dad. And now if he feels as if he can't take this, and I'm not his child, he can walk away at any moment. And he has no ties or connections to me or my children if he's not my father. All these years, everything's been perfect up until a couple of months ago, or it's, it's been arguing back and forth. Like, we don't even know who each other are anymore. It's, I feel like I'm in a whole nother place, but my body is over here. I'm just, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Mrs. Peterson, you say if there could be multiple men that are her Father, that means during the window of conception, around the time she was conceived, you were with different men. How were you able to pull that off and be in a committed relationship with Mr. Peterson? I was very young. I knew better, but I didn't think about the conse consequences before I did things. I go to parties and drink and everything like that and then go home with people. You were young, so he wouldn't necessarily think you were missing. You were just at a party. You just went to a party. Right. He wasn't thinking you were having sex with people after the party. Correct. So the other man that's in court today is Mr. Beckham. Can you explain the nature of your relationship with him? We partied together. We drank together. We had sex a couple times. And he potentially could be LaJoy's biological father. Yes along with the other 12 men, <laughs> right? Yes. The number is 12? No, that's not the exact number, but more and more men just keep coming out the woodworks. Mrs. Peterson, Mr. Beckham, the other possible father, did you ever tell him you were pregnant and he could potentially be the father? No, I didn't, Your Honor. All right, I think it's time we meet Mr. Beckham. LaJoya, please go stand with your father, and Jerome, will you please escort Mr. Beckham into sure. the courtroom, please? Thank you for joining us today, sir. How are you? <clears throat> we are getting down to the bottom of this paternity situation as it relates to LaJoya Jackson. When did you find out that you could potentially be her biological father? Um, I found out, like, about two weeks ago. She contacted me through Facebook. And basically, she had once told me once before that, you know, she could have been pregnant or whatever. So, but I had not move. I moved away. But basically, you know, we had met at a party. You know, we was drinking. And, you know, every, there was a lot going but on But drinking tonight. mean that you couldn't have been the father. Right, but exactly. Why, why didn't you try to pursue and see what was going on? Well, basically, at the time, I was young. I was scared. And, you know, I really just wasn't ready to be a father at that time. So. so when you grew up, why didn't you try to contact her like, oh, let me see what she did with the child or anything? <laughs> like, that's a straight I, deadbeat move right there. Like, yeah, I basically... I might have a child in this world, but I don't care. I'm just gonna go on, move away, whole out of state. 
a million miles away and not even see if the child is mine. Did Mrs. Peterson say to you, I'm pregnant and you're the father? Yeah, somewhat like that. She said it. I could be the father. You could be. Yeah. Mrs. Peterson, you testified that you did not tell him you were pregnant. I didn't. So is he remembering the story wrong? Yes, Your Honor. So he's remembering it wrong or you're remembering it wrong? Because to me, neither one of y'all got y'all story straight. I'm I mean, just wondering. Neither one of us are the same person we were. Yeah, how you gonna Hold on, I want to hear your testimony. What are you saying, Mrs. Peterson? I said that we're not liars. Neither one of us are the person that we were. I mean, I know you and grew up... And I've been your mother every then. day since then. You have been my mother, but you've been lying to me about who my father is for 22 years. <laughs> Every day when I got to wake up and see that y'all arguing, you sleeping in the car, and this guy right here just sitting there looking like, oh, this doesn't affect his life, and you ruining my family. And you don't care. Oh, we was drinking, we was having a party, but you don't care. Because at the end of the night, you're going to go home to your family. You probably got a family. I don't know, because I never saw you a day in my life because you never tried to contact me. It's my first time ever seeing you a day in my life. Wow. Right, and, I, and it looks like you don't but... care. I mean, I do care. I want to find out if, if I am your father. I really do. That's why I'm here. Because if I am your father, then I'm going to step up and do what I'm supposed to do for you. <laughs> you know, it's not my fault that me and your mom was young and we were kids, you know? And basically, my family moved away. And so, therefore, that's how I really lost contact. But small word, though, we all here together. So today, we're going to find out. And I really do want to know. I'm sorry for, you know, not being there if I am your father. I really apologize for that. But we're going to find out today, LaJoya, because I really want to know. Ms. Peterson, when you see your daughter in this much pain, do you regret not telling her sooner? Yes. <laughs> This is not what I meant to happen. Mr. Peterson, I know this hurts because LaJoya is your only child with Mrs. Peterson. She's our only child. And so if she's not your biological child, this relationship you've had for all of these years... It's gonna break my heart. If... If she's not mine, it's... Like I said, I feel like I wasted a lot of time. Now I got to start all over again because I would like to have a family of my own if she's not my daughter. I don't want to leave from her family, but I would like to have me a family. Are you saying that if you are not LaJoya's biological father... I'm gone. ...you are going to get a divorce? You're going to pursue a divorce? I'm gone. I, don't, I, I hurt her. She hurt me. That's not what love is about. I got to go if, if she's not mine. I think it's time for the results. Jerome? Sure. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Peterson versus Peterson, when it comes to 22-year-old LaJoya Jackson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Beckham, you are not her father. In the case of Peterson versus Peterson, when it comes to 22-year-old LaJoya Jackson, it has been determined by this court Mr. Peterson, you are not her father. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Really, Mom? Every time, though, like, I came and asked you, just tell me before we go, do you know? Oh, I know he's the father. I know. I know. I thought you knew, Mom. I, I thought, thought you knew. I thought. I thought. I thought you I knew. Thought. I'm sorry. I did think he was your father, or I wouldn't be here. I'm oh so my. very sorry, LaJoya. I'm so very sorry. I know how much you all wanted a different result. Yep. I'm I walked out of here with no father, Your Honor. Nobody. I don't have nothing now. I'm still gonna be here. <laughs> I'm still gonna be here. I ain't going nowhere. Sorry. 
I'm sorry. Please forgive no. me. Please. <laughs> I'll find him. I don't want to keep going through this. <laughs> He's still your family. Well, we not family. That's fine. She's still my daughter. You worried about that? It's my mistake. I will do what I can. I will fix this. You gonna fix me too? Ms. Peterson, th th is it one man in particular you truly believe is her biological father after getting the results from Mr. Beckham and the results from Ms. Mr. Peterson? There is another man. Yes. You know where he is. Yes. That's a start. Ms. Manship, at the age of 10, you were shocked and devastated to learn that your dad was not your biological father. That began your 20-year search to find the man your mother claims is your father. After your exhaustive search to find him, you came up with nothing. Well, Ms. Manship, this court has located him, and he will join us in a moment. This will be the first time meeting him and your mother's first time seeing him since they broke up more than 30 years ago. But before we bring in the defendant, Mr. Lop, Ms. Manship, tell me what happened when you were 10 years old. Um, up until I was 10, I believed that my brother's father was my father. And then they had a DNA test done and it came back that he was not my father. And that made him really angry, so... He stopped letting me come over to his house. And you remember this rejection? I do. And so, how did your mother tell you that Mr. Lop was your biological father? Uh, she just, she sat me down and she had one picture and this is the one picture that she gave me that I've had for the past 20 years. And I just look at it and she says, this is who your father is. He was the only other person I was with. And... He's just, he's the only one that it could be. We had a place where we hung out at, when we were younger and I would stop a, a police officer and I'd say, how, how do you go about searching for somebody that you haven't, that you know nothing about, that all you have is a name and a picture? Mm -hmm. And he, he would give me, you know, small details of what he could tell me. What did you do? I would go do people searches online Back whenever they had, like, the Yahoo chat rooms, I would go to the state that she told me he was from, which was Little Rock, Arkansas. I would go in there, and I'd mention his name and say, you know, does anybody know this man? I believe he is my father, and I've, I've been searching for him. And nobody ever had any information they could give me. Um, we even went back and to And all you had to go on was this one photo you the had? The one picture and the one name. It's, it's, it's all the information I had. And, and the, the bar that they met at, which we went back to and would ask people, you know, has he been back in here? Does he, does anybody know who he is? And no one had any answers? Nobody had any answers. Absolutely no leads? Not, none at all. Jerome, I think we need to hear from okay. him. Please escort Mr. Lop into the courtroom. Mr. Lop, thank you so much for joining us today. <clears throat> we are here, of course, discussing the paternity of Ms. Manship. Have you ever heard about Ms. Manship being born? No, Your Honor, I didn't. When is the first time you heard about her? When the court contacted me just recently. You never knew she existed? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor, But you did have a relationship with Ms. Lutman, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. You remember that? It's 30 years I have to guess. ask you, is this you in this photo? Yes, Your Honor. That is you? Yes. So we know we at least have the right <laughs> Mr. Laup. How does that make you feel, Ms. Manship? Relieved. You had no idea this young woman had been looking for you for 20 years? No, Your Honor. It makes you very emotional, Mr. Lop? Yes, Your Honor. Can you describe to the court what you must be feeling in this moment? What are you feeling? Not really sure. 
Miss Manship, can you please tell Mr. Lop how hard you searched for him? Will you tell him how long you've been looking? Since my early teens, I've searched everywhere. I've searched phone books. I've searched online. I've asked people, and I've never had a response from anybody in the past 20 years. Nobody has ever given me even a single detail of where he's from or where he lives. If he has any family, I don't know anything. And you've never gotten one lead? Not one. You had no hope until this court tracked him down? Yes. What went through your mind when the court contacted you, Mr. Lop? What were you thinking? I was just shocked. Um... You felt shocked because you had never received any information. You never even heard someone say someone was looking for you. Nothing? No, Your Honor. What was your relationship between you and Ms. Lutman back then, as you look at that picture? What was your relationship like? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she had picked me up hitchhiking across town. And um, we, were, we were both cutting up, having fun, and uh, ended up hanging out for the day. And I think shortly after that, maybe after a couple of months, we had uh, rented an apartment. Were you boyfriend a... and girlfriend? You rented an apartment together? Yes, Your Honor. And I believe she had a, uh, an ex-boyfriend that wasn't happy about the situation. You know, she had told me she had uh, three kids and that she was about 12 years older than I was. Um, I definitely remember her boyfriend not being happy about it, her ex-boyfriend not being happy about it. Did he confront you? We kept it amicable. And then at one point in time, at the, uh, I'm not sure how it happened, but uh, he had burned all my clothes up in the fireplace and uh really and for what reason i don't know why his motorcycle was outside um i kind of tore it up a little bit a little bit <laughs> just a little bit okay so miss ludman did you have two men fighting over you uh well i only wanted to keep one you did <laughs> i was really happy with this man. You were very happy with Mr. Law? The ex didn't want to stay out of the picture. So tell me what happened when you got pregnant. He said he had to get back to Arkansas and take care of business. So me and my ex got back together. And about a month later, I started getting symptoms of getting pregnant. And I was with my ex, so I figured it was my ex's baby, you know. So we just continued, uh, all the way up until I had her, you know. So you, when you found out you were pregnant, you thought it was your ex's child? Yes. I, yeah, I just figured it was my ex's because I'd be in a month later, you know, and be with him. Uh, and so you had the baby, and you and your ex raised the baby up until she was 10. That's when she said she was told. Yes. What That's prompted right. the DNA test? I don't remember a lot about when he did the DNA or why he did the DNA. Uh, I just remember he came to me and told me that she was not his daughter. And so when you got the paternity results, when Ms. Manship was 10 years old, you immediately knew, well, if it's not my ex, it is... Trent. Mr. Lop. Yes. Yes, sir. Were you with any other men during the window of conception? No, Your Honor. Mr. Laup, do you remember why or how your relationship with Ms. Lutman ended? I believe, Your Honor, we, uh, we had to get together um, at the apartment, and, uh, and I believe I walked in the bedroom and both of them were crashed out in the bedroom. And I guess I pro that's probably what threw the towel in for me. Um, but I believe, I thought that I was in town for at least about six months after that. Uh, so you caught her and, your, and her ex together? All right, they were both asleep in the bed. I don't know what... You know, okay, but they were asleep in the bed, and then that's what made you decide to cut it off, to, 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 to be done with the relationship? Yes, Your Honor. So you broke up with her, but you stayed around town for another six months? Yes. Did you ever hear, were you ever told that Ms. Lutman was pregnant? No, Your Honor. Were you aware that she was pregnant? No, Your Honor. Did you ever talk to her again? I believe after I moved up north to Ohio, 
I, I can't remember if I called her or she had called me, one of the two. Um, Do you remember that conversation, Ms. No, Ludden? I, I never made any calls. I never heard from him uh, after he left, no. So you say you never heard from him and you never talked to him again? No. No, Your Honor. So, Mr. Lop, when you were contacted by the court, did you initially believe this could be your daughter? Or did you not believe it? Did you say this was... This has got to be a mistake? I, I didn't believe it. I, I figured it probably was a mistake. Um, mainly because the fact that she knew quite a few people. Um, you know, I mean, she had a lot of male friends and um, I'd been married uh, four times. Um, First marriage was 12 years, and I didn't have any children. Um, second marriage was uh, two years, still no children. Um, Six-month marriage after that, and still no children. And then eight-year marriage after that, without any children. So I, I really didn't believe that... So you have been married several times, and you've never had children with any of your wives? No, Your Honor, I actually thought I was shooting blanks all the time. <laughs> so in addition to not ever hearing about Ms. Manship, not ever speaking to Ms. Lutman, never being told by Ms. Lutman that you're potentially her daughter's father, and you've been married to different women and never fathered a child. No, Your Honor. Ms. Manship, when he said that, your head just dropped. What are you thinking in this moment, hearing that? I'm just... I'm just hoping that everything I've been told is true because if it is, I mean, I'm his only... I'm the only one out there that he has, so... I've believed that he's been my father so long that I actually named my youngest son after him. You did? I did. Um... <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I named him Dallas Trent because I didn't want to miss the opportunity if he was to have, what, have one of my children have his name in it. And there it is. You I, named your son Dallas Trent. And I... Because his name is Trent Laup. Yes. And I, um... I haven't been married. Um, I, in hopes that maybe one day I did find him, I'd have that one moment left with him. That's, mm. that's the only moment I have left as a father and daughter type thing, so... So all of these years, you never got married I've... because you were saving that one father-daughter moment, that precious moment. That's all I had left. I'm just hoping that everything I've been told is true. So, Mr. Laup, are you willing and are you open to having a father-daughter relationship with Miss Manship? Should it be determined that she is your biological child? Yes, Your Honor, by all means. You are. Miss Lutman, if for some reason Mr. Laup is not your daughter's biological father, do you have any other information that could help lead her to the man who is? No, Your Honor. Well, I think we've waited long enough. Let's get the results. Jerome? Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Manship Lutman versus Laup, when it comes to 30-year-old Tanya Manship, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Lau, you are the father. How do you feel, Mr. Lau? Pretty happy. Oh, that's great. So you got one beautiful daughter. Yes, I do. And Miss Manship, it has been a long road. 
I know it has. And you've held on to that picture. That's what she held on to for 20 years, Mr. Lau. And how many children do you have, Ms. Manship? I have three boys. <clears throat> three boys. You got a daughter, three grandsons, Mr. Lau. What, what a day. <laughs> but I hope you take that picture, frame it. I hope you make your daddy a copy. <laughs> because, no, that picture is a symbol. I mean, look, we, we see a lot of families in crisis in this courtroom. And we encourage them each and every day to never give up hope that there is always a possibility for something new. I call them limitless possibilities around us each and every day, every moment. There are possibilities that we can't even fathom. Yes, you're right. Right? right. And from here on out, you don't have to be separated again. <laughs> I can see how happy you are for your little girl, Miss Love. Yeah. You are? Good. Yes, Your Honor. I am the happiest person in the world right now. Oh, that's wonderful.